Well, hello. Welcome back to my channel. How is everybody? Hmm. This is Glitzy Gem. Today is a day that I get to discuss a topic that's been hanging over my head. What is it? Anyone? What is it? What's hanging over my head? What What day is it today? Hmm. <coughs> You, yeah. It's Stroke Awareness Day. You bet you. Yeah, you bet it is. It's Stroke Awareness Day. I'm going to talk about stroke awareness. This is my Geek Day video. By the way, yes, yeah, today's my Geek Day video. That's why I have my nerdy glasses on. We're going to have fun today. Okay? Let me give you some information on strokes. I got this information off of WebMD and Mayo Clinic. There are two types of strokes, but before I get into details, um, let me tell you what a stroke is. Um, a stroke is also called a cardiovascular accident, for, or CVA for short. Um, it's damage to the brain from interruption of its blood supply, requires a medical diagnosis, lab tests, or imaging also required. Uh, treatment can help, but this condition can't be cured. Uh, you need to watch out for symptoms, for example, trouble walking, speaking, and understanding as well as paralysis or numbness of the face, arms, or leg, uh, side of face droops or feels numb, speech difficulties, um, muscle weakness on one side of the body. I'm going to show you a picture. I'm going to show you a picture of my friend Gary here. And um, this should give you an idea of what symptoms to look for in a stroke, when somebody's having a stroke. Yes, there goes my poor dear friend Gary. He's dropping his coffee. So, here to the, to the left says, side of the face droops or feels numb. Muscle weakness on one side of body and here on the... Um, the right side says speech difficulties. My poor friend Gary here, poor guy. Couldn't have his morning coffee. So those are some symptoms of stroke. Also common symptoms are difficulty swallowing, headache, inability to understand, mental confusion, or rapid involuntary eye movement. Okay. Um, when to see a doctor. You have to practice the word fast because whenever you're having a stroke you want to act fast. Um, so when to see a doctor. So the first thing you, you want to see is uh, you want to look at the face. Ask the person to smile. Uh, does one side of the face droop? Then arms. Ask the person to raise both of their arms. If one arm, you know, feel, looks like, you know, it's lower than the other, that's a sign, you know, that they're, uh, that it's drifting downward, that's a sign, you know, of a stroke. Speech, ask the person to repeat a simple phrase, you know, is his or her speech slurred or strange? And time, if you observe any of these signs, call 911 immediately. So I'm going to show you a, a diagram of FAST. Okay, so these are the symptoms you want to look out for. And um, I have this here with me called FAST. And F stands for face drooping. You see the lady here, my friend Carol here. Her face is drooping. Arm weakness. Here's Earl, my friend Earl here with his arm, arm weakness, speech difficulty. And then when you see any of these symptoms, it's time to call 911, okay? It's very important. Um, you, don't wanna, you don't want to see if the symptoms stop. The longer a stroke goes um, untreated, the greater the potential for brain damage and disability. 
And you don't want any of your friends to go through that. You don't want them to go through any of those disabilities or brain damage. And, um, you know, I can't just imagine, you know, you know, one of my friends or co-workers going through something like that. Can you just imagine that? What can I get you? Hi. I'd like a um, cheeseburger with a uh, side of French fries and a slice of pie. Hey, man. Is your face drooping out of place? Hey, man. The letter F stands for face. I said, hey, man. No excuse, help yourself. Just go to the daydreaming for a minute wow wasn't that a funny video but no it's not it's not funny what causes a stroke a stroke may be caused by a blocked artery called ischemic stroke or the leaking or burst of blood vessel hemorrhage stroke so let me show you a diagram of these two strokes I think I have one We have here the type of stroke, ischemic stroke, which means this area here um, is deprived of blood. This area right here is deprived of blood. And then a thrombus or embolus blocks blood flow to part of the brain. So you can see this thrombus that is describing, describing here, or embolus, like a little blockage in this artery. That's what is in an ischemic stroke. So now we're gonna go to the hemorrhagic, hemorrhage, hemorrhagic stroke. It's blood spills out from break in blood vessel in brain so you can see here how it starts to burst out it just spills out of the of the, of the blood vessel this is the blood vessel that just spills out and that's called the hemorrhagic stroke and area of bleeding it starts here in the area where um, it bursts So those are the two types of strokes that, that um, I've mentioned here. 
Some people may experience only a temporary disruption of blood flow to the brain. Transient ischemic attack or TIA. Um, that doesn't cause permanent damage. So I'm going to show you, you know, a diagram uh, from the National Stroke Organization. Um, I believe it's this one here. This is a, a transient ischemic attack. As you can see, the brain here is actually the main thing. It's just this artery here that's being blocked. But there's no permanent damage, you know, when you have a TIA. You see the little veins in the in the brain. And sometimes these veins, they get blocked. Okay, so I will go into detail about the types of strokes. Um, ischemic strokes, I'm going to read off my notes here. Ischemic strokes. About 80% of strokes are ischemic strokes. Um, ischemic strokes occur in the arteries to your brain. They become narrowed or blocked, causing severely reduced blood flow or ischemia. Uh, the most ischemic strokes include thrombotic stroke. A thrombotic stroke occurs when a blood clot or thrombus forms in one of the arteries that supply blood to your brain. I hope this is making sense to you guys. I Wish I had more diagrams to show you, but I could only show you what I have with me. Let me see. Um, like I showed you in this picture, what a uh, ischemic stroke looked like. It has that throm the thrombus blockage right there. So that's what a th uh, thrombotic stroke, what, what it's talking about here. It's when a blood clot forms in one of the arteries that supply blood to your brain. A clot may be caused by fatty deposits or plaque. Um, so that can be considered plaque, you know, in the diagram that I showed you there. That can be considered plaque as well. Um, uh, that build up in arteries and cause reduced blood flow or, or other artery conditions. Embolic stroke. I wish I had a, a diagram of an embolic stroke. I don't have one. An embolic stroke occurs when a blood clot or other debris forms away from your brain. You know, commonly in your heart. So, and uh, it's swept through your bloodstream to lodge in narrow brain arteries. This type of blood clot is called an embolus. So, hemorrhagic stroke occurs when a blood vessel in your brain leaks or ruptures, which I showed you on the, dry, on the diagram. Uh, brain hemorrhages can result from many conditions that affect your blood vessels. These include uncontrolled high blood pressure, hypertension. So those who have high blood pressure, be careful because um, you're at risk of my, you know, of getting strokes. So be careful. Over treatment with anticoagulants, which are blood thinners. Um, weak spots in your blood vessel walls called aneurysms. A less common cause of hemorrhage is a rupture of an abnormal tangle of thin-walled blood vessels. Arter, arteriovenous malformation. I'm going to show you a picture of that. Arteriovenous malformation. That is um, what I just said. A less, a less common cause of hemorrhage is a rupture of an abnormal tangle of thin walled blood vessels and I do have a picture of that and I have it here on my phone y'all can see that see inside the the red area tangled wall thin walled blood vessels see that little red part right there and then I'm gonna read what what it says here a draining vein this is AVM needus a feeding arteries feeding arteries I got this picture off the internet and it's by Mayfield Clinic so I'm gonna mention their name just in case I don't want to get in trouble with any copyrights but uh, yeah this is this is called arteriovenous venous malformation 
moving on. Uh, types of hemorrhage, hemorrhagic stroke include intracerebral hemorrhage. And in an intracerebral hemorrhage, a blood vessel in the brain bursts and spills into the surrounding brain tissue, damaging brain cells. I have a picture of this too as well. Okay, so here we go. Here's a picture of it on my phone. So this is the, the stroke area right here. This is the stroke area. And then it's um, making this area bigger so you can see like where it ruptures. You see all that blood spilling and it's spilling into all the brain cells in the brain. Uh, that's the blood clot actually. It's a blood clot. And then hypertension ruptures tiny arteries, see? So hypertension actually ruptures tiny arteries. You can see that. Here we go, yeah. The little tiny arteries. All right. So moving along. Um, Brain cells beyond the leak are deprived of blood and are also damaged. High blood pressure, trauma, vascular malformations, use of blood thinning medications and other conditions may cause an intracerebral hemorrhage. And I just showed you all that. Um, sub sub subarachnoid subarachnoid hemorrhage. In a subarachnoid hemorrhage, sorry, <laughs> these are hard words to pronounce, especially whenever, you know, right now I'm having like a sinus um, infection, sinus issue. It's kind of hard for me to speak right now. So in a sub subarachnoid hemorrhage, an artery on or, on or near, on or near, let me start all over. In a sub subarachnoid hemorrhage, an artery on or near the surface of your brain bursts and spills into the spaces between the surface of your brain and your skull. This bleeding is often signaled by a sudden severe headache. I'm going to show you a picture of a sub subarachnoid hemorrhage. This is the subarachnoid hemorrhage. As you can see here, this is the stroke area, this gray area there on the picture is the stroke area. And within that stroke area, see, focus on me. You can see an aneurysm forming here. Okay, and blood in a subarachnoid space right here. So anywhere between, anywhere in the skull area, that's where the, anywhere in the skull area is where you're going to see blood coming from that aneurysm, as we spoke about. Some deep stuff, aren't we getting into, isn't it, getting into some deep stuff right now. <laughs> Um, a sub subarachnoid hemorrhage is commonly caused by the bursting of small shack shaped or berry shaped aneurysms as I showed you in the picture after the hemorrhage the blood vessels in your brain may widen and narrow erratically the vascular spasms so causing brain cell damage by further limiting blood flow Ooh, you don't want that you don't want to have them erratically vasospasm spasm like that because it'll limit blood flow and you know when you limit blood flow into your brain mm -mm, your brain will not work will not function you start having these problems which will turn into a stroke um, a transient ischemic attack or TIA for short you know we had mentioned that earlier sometimes known as a mini stroke, is a temporary period of symptoms similar to those 
you'd have in a stroke. A temporary decrease in blood supply to part of your brain causes TIAs, which may last as little as five minutes. Like an ischemic stroke, a TIA occurs when a clot or debris blocks blood flow to part of your nervous system, but there is no permanent tissue damage and no lasting symptoms. I had curls in my hair, but I didn't put no hairspray. Sorry, I'm vain, ain't I? <laughs> All right. Um, uh, seek emergency. Can't even speak. Cannot speak right now. Hmm. Excuse me. Excuse me for a minute. Uh, seek emergency care, even if your symptoms seem to clear up. Having a TIA puts you at greater risks of having a full-blown stroke, causing permanent damage later. If you had a TIA, it means there's likely a partially blocked or narrowed artery leading to your brain or a clot source in the heart. How is that possible where your heart, your heart and your brain are connected? I mean, well, I'm not a genius, so maybe that's why it's kind of like, you know, I'm thinking, how can that happen? You know, the brain and the heart, while well, they function together, I guess that makes sense. Um, so it's not possible to tell if you're having a stroke or a TIA based only on your symptoms. Even when symptoms last for under an hour, there is still a risk of permanent tissue damage. Risk factors. Many factors can increase your stroke risk. Some factors can also increase your chances of having a heart attack. A potentially treatable stroke risk factors include lifestyle risk factors, being overweight or obese. Mm, that's a problem that I have. Physical inactivity. Yeah, the only activity I have is at work. The only physical activity I get is, is at work. Heavy or binge drinking. Mm, no, I don't do that. I don't, mm -mm. I don't drink, I don't drink alcohol. Uh, use of illicit drugs such as, oh, I don't do that either. Uh, use of illicit drugs such as cocaine and methamphetamines. Medical risk factors. Blood pressure readings are higher than 120, 120 over 80 millimeters of mercury. So when you do you take your blood pressure, you know, make sure it stays below those numbers. The top number has to be 120 or below. The bottom number has to be lower than 80. Normally, it's supposed to be, I want to say you should be like within the 70s. You know is a normal range mine sometimes are in the 60s and 70s which is good I you know I get uh, told by the doctors that's a really good blood pressure my blood pressure is, I don't have high blood pressure and my blood pressure tends to be low you know tends to be on the lower side than on the higher side which is really good and and uh, I don't want to I don't know refreshing or or glad that I don't have to worry about high blood pressure, but I don't want to, you know, speak so soon because, you know, anything could happen at any moment. I mean, you know, you see so many people that pass away, you know, and, you know, they're healthy one day and then all of a sudden, you know, they they pass away the next and you're, you're wondering, like, what happened? Like, what? Yeah. This girl's like, what? <laughs> so... Cigarette smoking or exposure to secondhand smoke, that's bad. High cholesterol, mm. I'm, on the, I'm, I'm on the high side. I think I'm, I want to say four, four points over my high side, maybe more, I think maybe 10 or 14 points. So the doctors tell me it's not too much of, it's not too much of a risk for me, you know, where I can need to take medication. But if I don't keep it low and watch what I eat, then I will need to take medication if it's, if it's you know, gets any higher. So I gotta watch for that. Diabetes, that's something I do need to worry about. It runs in my family. Um, and I am borderline diabetic. I have to eat, because if I don't eat, I start to feel 
I start to feel, I was going to say fuzzy or funny, but you start to feel lightheaded. You start to feel like you need to take in more deeper breaths whenever you don't eat. You feel like your blood sugar tends to lower. So, um, I don't, I'm not taking medication for that. The doctors tell me I'm fine. I don't need any medication for borderline diabetes just to kind of, you know, just watch what I, watch what I eat. So, yeah. Obstructive sleep apnea. That I need to go get checked out as well because I had sleep apnea. <clears throat> I was diagnosed with sleep apnea maybe five years ago. But um, I started having problems with my CPAP machine. And so I stopped using my CPAP. And I, I remember uh, the doctors telling me that you cannot stop just using your CPAP machine because then you can, you can damage your heart. You can start to have heart disease, you know, with sleep apnea. And if it's not controlled, then, yeah, it, it's bad. So I need to go back and get that checked out. Um, I don't think I'm at risk. Well, everybody's at risk, but I think, I think I'm, I'm okay. Like I'm at the borderline. So I do need to get that checked out again and see if, um, I need to start using a CPAP machine again. I, I don't know. I don't snore. That doesn't matter. You know, anybody can get sleep apnea. Um, cardiovascular disease. Uh, including heart failure, heart defects, heart infection, or abnormal heart rhythm, personal or family history of stroke, heart attack, or transient ischemic attack. So, um, now let's talk about the complications, okay? Um, a stroke can sometimes cause temporary or permanent disabilities depending on how long the brain lacks blood flow and which part was affected. Complications may include paralysis or loss of muscle movement. You may become paralyzed on one side of your body or lose control of certain muscles, such as those on one side of your face or one arm. Physical therapy may help you return to activities affected by paralysis, such as walking, eating, and dressing. Difficulty swallowing, I'm sorry, difficulty talking or swallowing. A stroke might affect control of the muscles in your mouth and throat, making it difficult for you to talk clearly, which uh, the term for that is dys dysarthria. Swallow, which, which the term is dysphagia, dysphagia or eat. You also may have difficulty with language, which is aphasia. I think that's what I'm experiencing right now, aphasia. I have difficulty with my language, including speaking or understanding speech, reading, speaking, or writing. Therapy with speech language pathologists might help. Memory loss or thinking difficulties. I get some of that too. Am I getting a, a stroke? I see my face drooping. No. Mm. No, I don't want to joke about that. No. Uh, but some of this stuff is serious. It's real. This is some serious information because uh, I experience some of these things, you know, and you just, you know, I experience symptoms. But, like, like, you know, I did my research. You can't really go off of, you know, you you know these symptoms you have to go see a doctor you know to get those symptoms checked out and you know make sure that you're not at risk of the stroke or that you were or if you had a mini stroke or if you had a stroke you know i mean a lot of people might have these these types of symptoms and they don't even know that they might have had a a tia a transient ischemic strokes um attack i'm sorry um so, many people who have had stroke experience a memory loss. Others may have difficulty thinking, making judgments, reasoning, and understanding concepts. Emotional problems. Mm. Okay. People who have had strokes may have more difficulty controlling their emotions, or they may develop depression. Mm. 
<sighs> pain. Pain, numbness, or other strange sensations may occur in the parts of the body affected by stroke. For example, if a stroke causes you to lose feeling in your, your left arm, you may develop an uncomfortable tingling sensation in that arm. People also may be sensitive to temperature changes, especially extreme cold after a stroke. This complication is known as central stroke pain or central pain syndrome. This condition generally develops several weeks after a stroke and it may improve over time. But because the pain is caused by a problem in your brain, Rather than a physical injury, there are a few treatments. Um, changes in behavior and self-care ability. People who have, a, who have had a stroke may become more withdrawn and less social or more impulsive. Uh, they may need help with grooming and daily chores. Okay. Uh, what we can do to be preventative? Mm -hmm. Anybody knows? Probably not. That's why you're watching my video, right? <laughs> well, knowing your stroke risk factors, following your doctor's recommendations, and, and adopting a healthy lifestyle are the best steps you can take to prevent stroke. If you've had a stroke or transient ischemic attack, these measures might help prevent another stroke. The follow-up care you receive in the hospital and afterwards also may play a role as well. Recommendations. These are recommendations. This is what I recommend for all of you who are suffering with high blood pressure or any kind of symptoms or anything that we have discussed here. Controlling high blood pressure, hypertension. This is one of the most important things you can do to reduce your stroke risk. Read mine. Inhale, exhale, and breathe. Okay, you don't want to have a high, you don't want your blood pressure to rise. So once you start to feel like you're in a position where you just need to just relax, just remember to inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, and then just breathe normally. Don't worry your blood pressure. That's what you need to do. Um, examples of lowering blood pressure are exercising, managing stress, maintaining a healthy weight, and limiting the amount of sodium and alcohol you eat and drink can all help to keep high blood pressure in check. In addition to recommendation lifestyle changes, your doctor may prescribe medication to treat high blood pressure. Lowering the amount of cholesterol and saturated fat in your diet. How many people eat so much saturated fats? And cholesterol. I'm one of those people. I gotta, I'm not, pretty sure I'm not the only one. Um, eating less cholesterol and fat, especially saturated fat and trans fats, may reduce the plaque in your arteries. If you control if you can't control your doctor, may prescribe a cholesterol lowering medication. Yeah. So try to control it. You know, you don't want to get, you don't want to get medication. You don't want to, you know, have medication. You don't want to take medication when you can control it. Quitting tobacco use. Smoking raises the risk of stroke for smokers and non-smokers. Okay. Some of my coworkers need to read, to watch this video. You know, they need to quit smoking. It's better and it's healthier. I mean, you know, everywhere you go now, you can't smoke. You can't smoke inside the premises anymore. Uh, controlling diabetes. You can manage diabetes with diet, exercise, weight control, and medication. Maintenance. A healthy weight. Being overweight contributes to other stroke risk factors such as high blood pressure, cardiovascular disease, and diabetes. Losing as little as 10 pounds 
you know, may lower your blood pressure and improve your cholesterol levels. Eating a diet rich in fruits and vegetables. A diet containing five or more daily servings of fruits or vegetables may reduce your risk of stroke. Following the Mediterranean diet, I, had, I have not looked that up, but um, if you have a chance, look it up and see if something that y'all want to, you know, get into if you want to do this Mediterranean diet. It, it emphasizes on olive oil, if you like to use olive oil, those who don't, you know, I mean, who don't like olive oil, well, this may not be, I don't want to, you know, maybe don't rule out, you know, maybe you can do some of the other things in this diet, um, um, fruit, nuts, vegetables, and whole grains may help, may be helpful. So I don't have a picture of the diet, but you can picture it. It's olive oil, fruits or vegetables. I mean, we all eat fruit and vegetables, but I'm pretty sure that, that uh, you have to look up the Mediterranean diet and see, you know, what else you can eat, you know, or how to make the meals, you know, because sometimes on, on some of these diets, you know, there's meal plans, there's, there's meals, and there's things you need to go to the grocery store and buy. Some things you have to go buy at the whole food store, and that's why I stopped doing these kind of diets. So what I'm doing now is I'm just like, like on my um, video where you know it was like hanging out with me. It was a hanging out video with me, and I showed you, you know, my my routine of what I eat throughout the day, and you know, I just eat smaller portions now, and I eat fruits, vegetables you know, as snacks. Um, I stay away from sodas. I drink a lot of water. Water is very important. But uh, yeah, if you're, you want to be, if you want to get more information on this Mediterranean diet, you know, you know, you can look it up, Google it, look it up, get information on it. Exercising regularly, aerobic or cardio, exercise reduces your risk of stroke in many ways. Exercise can lower your blood pressure, increase your level of high density, lipoprotein cholesterol and improve the overall health of your blood vessels and heart. It also helps you lose weight, control diabetes and reduce stroke. Gradually work up to 30 minutes of activity such as walking, jogging, swimming or bicycling on most if not all days of the week. So try doing that every day. If not, you know, just three, two times a day. Just start off somewhere. Drinking alcohol in moderation, if at all. Alcohol can be both a risk factor and a protective measure for stroke. Heavy alcohol consumption increases your risk of high blood pressure. So, um, so those who are drinking heavily, yeah, high blood pressure, not a good combination. Please don't do it. Ischemic strokes and hemorrhage strokes. However, drinking small to moderate amounts of alcohol, such as one drink a day, may help prevent ischemic stroke and decrease your blood's clotting tendency. Alcohol may also interact with other drugs you're taking. Talk to your doctor about what's appropriate for you. Treating obstructive sleep apnea. OSA for short. Your doctor may recommend an overnight oxygen assessment to screen OSA, a sleep disorder in which the oxygen level intermittently drops during the night. Treatment for OSA includes oxygen at night or wearing a small device in your mouth to help you breathe. Avoiding illegal drugs. Don't do drugs. Yes, certain street drugs such as cocaine, methamphetamines are established risk factors for a TIA or a stroke. Cocaine reduces blood flow and can narrow the arteries. Yes, so no drugs. Okay. Um, there's preventative medications as well that you can take. Your doctor may recommend 
recommend medications to help reduce your risk of having another stroke. These include antiplatelet drugs. Please, please don't let it get to, don't let it get that far. Let's take care of ourselves. Let's love our bodies. Let's love ourselves. You know, so that we won't get to the point where we get another stroke. If we had one, let's not get another one. These include antiplatelet drugs. Platelets are cells in your blood that form clots. Antiplatelet drugs make these cells less sticky and less likely to clot. The most commonly used antiplatelet medication is aspirin. Your doctor can help you determine the right dose of aspirin for you. Your doctor might also consider prescribing Agronox, a combination of low-dose aspirin and the antiplatelet drug Dipridamol to reduce the risk of blood clotting. I think I said it right. Dipridamol. Dipridamol. It's spelled D-I-P-Y-R-I-D-A-M-O-L-E. Dipridamol to reduce the risk of blood clotting. So aspirin and dipridamol. Um, I guess that's where the medication Agronox comes in. Um, if aspirin doesn't prevent your TIA or stroke, or if you can't take aspirin, your doctor may instead prescribe an antiplatelet drug such as Clopidogrel or Plavix. Let me just say Plavix. That's a hard word. Clopidogrel. The dog girl. You can say it and pronounce it so in many ways. It's spelled C L O P I D O G R E L. Clopidogrel, Plavix. Anticoagulants. These drugs, which include heparin and warfarin, that's Coumadin, Jantovin, reduce blood clotting. Heparin is fast acting and may be used over a longer term. Warfarin is a powerful blood thinning drug, so you'll need to take it exactly as directed and watch for side effects. Your doctor may prescribe these drugs if you have certain blood clotting disorders, certain arterial abnormalities, an abnormal heart rhythm, or other problems. Other newer blood thinners may be used if your TIA or stroke was caused by an abnormal heart rhythm. So, um, before I conclude, do anyone have any questions, huh? No? Okay. I just wanted to share that. I just wanted to share that um, on, December tw on December 10, 2017, I lost a very dear family member of mine. Um, not due to a stroke, you know, but an aneurysm. Uh, this family, this family member had two aneurysms, you know, they're slightly different than a stroke. Um, the doctors repaired the two aneurysms, but then six months later, a new one, um, a new one started for me. So there were complications from the second surgery and my family member didn't make it through. So that was hard for me. Um, I can relate to anyone who's lost a family member, you know, do a family member, a friend, you know, from any medical condition. I, we have no control over it. You know, and it's hard and unexpected. So that's why I say take care of yourselves. You know, love yourselves. Love each other. You know, so. Um, when I first got the news, you know, it didn't hit me. I, you know, I was sad and shocked, but I didn't feel anything. I was shocked, um, but I didn't cry, you know, at first. So until it sunk in, and that's when it hit me, and I was, like, devastated. I, I cried, you know, all of a sudden I started to cry, and I started to have panic attacks um, every day for a week, and then other weeks at a time I would get those panic attacks. Uh, my state of mind wasn't the same anymore. Um, for a long time, like, I want to say more than eight months. Uh, something in my mind triggered a reaction from feeling normal to feeling off, you know. Um, and that's 
that's a topic we'll discuss in my mental awareness video in May. So stay tuned for that. Okay. We're in 2019, so less than two years, and I still have my bad days, but I'm aware of my symptoms and how to control them. But I'm I'm going through a personal issue now that I have not opened up about, which I might in May, but not sure. We'll see. Yeah, so, yeah, I do have my, my bad days. Um, I have to write it down on paper so that I can remember to mention it to you guys, you know, um, you know, about my personal, my personal issues as well, you know, we all go through a lot, we all, we all go through things, and, um, yeah, it's just something that I have to deal with, um, but so back to the subject, uh, stroke and aneurysms are sometimes used interchangeably, but these two serious conditions have some important differences. A stroke occurs when there's a ruptured blood vessel in the brain or blood supply to the brain has been blocked, as I mentioned in my research earlier. But an aneurysm is a result of a weakened artery wall and not in the blood vessels. Aneurysms happen when the artery walls are weak because even though a stroke and an aneurysm are not the same, they are still similar in the way, in that way, I'm sorry, not in that way, in that they happen in the brain and they are both serious and need immediate action. Next, I will show you a slideshow of famous people who have had strokes that are still with us and some who have passed away. So let's start with this first one. I'm not sure if all of you know who this guy is, but his name is Luke Perry. Here's a clip of him now. Luke Perry was an American actor, died at age 52 of a massive stroke. He was surrounded by his children, fiance, ex-wife, mother, stepfather, brother, sister, and close family and friends. He passed away at Joseph Medical Center, Burnbank, California, March 4th. Okay, so let me tell you about Luke Perry um, growing up. I, I watched the original 90210 TV series, and I liked the whole cast on this, um, on this show. They did a great job portraying their characters, and I just realized his passing date was in the month of March, March 4th, which is a stroke awareness month, March is stroke awareness month. So each month will be remembered by Luke Perry's death. Yeah. Um, the next person I wanna show a clip on is uh, Bob Barker. Here's a clip of Bob Barker now. Bob Barker was known as an American game show host. In 1950, he moved to California in order to pursue a career in broadcasting. When his wife died, he became an advocate for animal rights and animal rights activism. In 2007, he retired from hosting The Price is Right after celebrating his 50-year career on television. In 1991, after he complained of a vision problem while exercising, neurologists said he had a mild stroke and recovered. On May 30, 2002, he experienced a stroke and was hospitalized. He was a stroke survivor and died at age 95. Okay, I grew up watching The Price is Right, so I really love this man. You know, and when he passed away, um, it was devastating for me because I just liked his, his phrases. I loved all his phrases he would say on the show. And also featured in one of my favorite films called Happy Gilmore with Adam Sandler. I'm not sure if anybody has watched that movie, but y'all need to watch it. It's funny. It was hilarious. You know, the part where him, well, I'm not going to spoil it for you guys, but there's a part where him and Adam Sandler, you know, played a role together. So, you ought to watch that. Um, it was hilarious. Uh, he was a huge animal rights activist. And sadly, ironically to say, he died of a dog bite. You know, all the, all the other, because I read his, his health history. On Wikipedia so this is where I'm getting my information from on these celebrities and famous people and he had several 
illnesses that, you know, you would think, you know, okay, he's going to die of this, or he passed away of that, or he passed away of, you know, but no, he passed away of a dog bite, and he was a, you know, um, an animal rights activist, you know, and um, I just found that kind of sad and ironic how he passed away of that, of a dog bite. Yeah. Um, here's one of Fran Frankie Muniz. I know who uh, who he is. He was, he, you know, he's very popular with the team crowd. So um, here's a clip of him now. Frankie Muniz is an American actor. He is best known for playing the title character in the Fox television sitcom Malcolm in the Middle and also made some popular teen movies, Agent Cody Banks, Part 1 and 2. On November 30, 2012, at age 26, was hospitalized after having a transient ischemic attack, also described as a mini-stroke. He suffered a second attack a year later on November 25, 2013. It was revealed on Dancing with the Stars on October 9, 2017, that he, in fact, has suffered significant memory loss including losing memories from his childhood acting days. So you saw Frankie Muniz's clip. Yeah, he's very young and he lost his memory, some of his um, younger childhood memories. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, my next favorite, well, this is one of my favorite ones, uh, Tina Turner. I think everybody knows Tina Turner. Here's a clip of her now. Tina Turner is an American-born Swiss singer, songwriter, dancer, and actress. Tina stated in her 2018 memoir, Tina Turner, My Love Story, that she had suffered life-threatening illnesses. In 2013, three weeks after her wedding, she suffered a stroke and had to learn to walk again. Yeah, she's one of my favorite singers of all time, you know, along with Whitney Houston, Selena, Aretha Franklin, and many more I can't, you know, I can't mention, I can't name them all at this moment, so, but she was one of my favorite singers. Rolling, rolling on the bed. Huh? Oh my goodness, oh, oh, do, 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 do. Ooh, I love her. Um, I'm going to do a karaoke day where I get on YouTube. And I start singing karaoke songs of some of my favorite singers, okay? So, y'all gonna be laughing at me. That's fine, you know, as long as you are laughing, having a good time. So, I'm thinking about doing one of those karaoke nights, karaoke days. So, stay tuned for that video as well. Um, back to Tina Turner. Yeah. This is what I wanted to tell you guys when I was reading her health history in uh, Wikipedia. Guys, this part, you know, has nothing to do with stroke awareness, but I was shocked to find out that um, Tina opted for homo, homeo, homeopathic remedies to treat her high blood pressure that resulted in damage to her kidneys. You know, you would think that homeopathic remedies, you know, would not do that to you. You know, I mean, you you know, you'd think, you know, because they're natural, they're going to help you, but they damage your, they damage your kidneys. I have, I had an aunt, you know, who um, passed away because she was always using homeopathic remedies, you know, natural supplements to cure her of diseases, you know, and, you know, in the Latin American culture, that's what we normally do. We seek our little teas and our um you know remedies home remedies we you know we you know herbs you know you know we, we 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 tend to go to those to help us with whatever illnesses that we're going through a simple you know not a simple cold but a cold to bronchitis to i mean there's so many homeopathic remedies out there for like like this one uh you know with the high blood pressure uh to so it damaged her kidneys and eventually um, she had kidney failure and her chances of receiving a kidney were low so she was at a point where she was kind of like uh, discouraged and she was urged to start dialysis 
So she considered she considered um, assisted suicide. I didn't know this about Tina Turner. I mean, I I'm not really like I don't read into a lot of famous people's backgrounds or I don't follow them, you know, on Instagram or you know, there's so many celebrities out there that you know that I like, but I really don't know them at a personal level cuz of course we don't know we don't all know them personally, but you know, you kind of see them you know, when they do their shows or when they sing or when you go to their concerts or, you know, you know, you kind of feel a part of them. You kind of feel like, you know, <clears throat> you kind of feel like you know them, you know, you know them partially, you know, you partially know them, you know, and, uh, but this is something I didn't know about Tina Turner. She considered assisted suicide and what that is, is having a physician or um, a healthcare provider assist with her with your suicide and she signed up to be a member of exit exit is a um, organization for legal euthanasia in switzerland because she is um like in the clip she is part swiss she's she is a part she's from swiss you know she, you know uh but thank goodness you know uh she changed her mind and um decided to donate a kidney for her transplant so, oof, I was relieved when I read that. So, this is all for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And thank you for watching. Remember, your health matters. Live a stress-free life. And if any of you have diabetes, high blood pressure, please take care of yourselves. Prevent a stroke from happening. Love you all. Let's spread love around in this world one day at a time. Now talk to you gems later. Bye.